This is the Budget Light Forum Giga Thrower. It's the light you saw in my video 1,290,000 CD flashlight from just a few months ago. And this is the world's most powerful LED. It's the Cree CXB3590, and it is a massive powerhouse. Factory rated at roughly 10 times the amount of power as the original Cree XHP35 high intensity. This is those two LEDs side by side. Just look at the size difference between that tiny yellow square on the left and that massive yellow blob on the right side. And this is the magic created by the synergy of those two powerhouses merged. Welcome back. Uh, number one, of course you saw we used the Cree CXB3590 in there. Now don't confuse that with uh, some of the cheap 100 watt LEDs that you see on eBay. You know, these might, if you're lucky, maybe deliver 7,500 lumens, and this is going to do much, much more than that. Probably uh, triple, depending on how good our heat sinking is. Um, number two, obviously, the Budget Light Form Giga Thrower. That's going to be our host and our driver solution. Now, this to me is kind of the biggest deal about this because that's why you don't see LEDs like this in flashlights because these take like 40 volts to power them, so there's not a lot of good choices. However, this is the Task LED Hyper Boost. It's a really powerful driver capable of boosting fairly low voltages up to 40 or even as high as 80 volts. Now in order to get the world's brightest LED to fit in the Giga Thrower, I did have to bore out the neck a bit on my lathe. Next, I enlarged the reflector bore so that it would fit nicely around the 3590 emitter. Pro tip number two, always blow this direction first. You'll get a lot fewer scratches on your reflector when you're cleaning them then. Once that was done, I decided to install the Task LED driver. For this, I basically just removed the components off the old BLF GT driver and made a flat surface that I could stick the new driver to. This board doesn't have a user interface of its own, so you have to use a potentiometer to control the power. I got a 50k pot with a push button switch, and then I just made my own button because the rod from the pot wasn't long enough otherwise. Okay, one other thing we need to change about this real quick is the battery configuration. Um, with the Giga Thrower, these battery adapters are roughly 14.1, no, 14.8 volts. Um, and typically when you stack things end to end in a flashlight, your voltage goes up, but that's not the case with these because both the positive and negative contacts are on the top. 
Now, basically what I did here on the top is just replace that aluminum ring with one made of acetyl so that there's no negative contact here on the top. We've only got our positive exposed. And then on the bottom where we used to have both the uh, negative and the positive there, I pretty much just filled in that hole with metal. It's raised on the underside so it doesn't touch where that pin used to be, but that's it. So now all we've got here is battery positive on this end and battery negative there. Now to get electricity to travel through the body, I had to deanodize. This the front contact here is already deanodized, but I also um, just outside of the ring there, I deanodized that, and then in the tail cap, this joint right here, um, right along that edge there, and also in the tail cap on this rim where it contacts the body and then along that edge where the battery carrier sits on it. Okay, we got her all together now. Look at that. Isn't that just gorgeous? That massive golden blob in the middle. I'm so thrilled at the way that came out, how it looks. I I think even our pot looks good on here too. Our knob. That just looks deadly to me, like it's just going to destroy some darkness. Here's it next to the original. Speaking of destroying some darkness, um, the output. I can't exactly measure it accurately because this doesn't fit on my lumen tube. It's too big so it won't measure accurately, but we can get a pretty easy estimation. Uh, the Hyper Boost driver is driving that LED at around about 38 volts, a full 3200 milliamps at that 38 volts. And so we're looking at roughly uh, 16,000 lumens. 16 thousand from that one single LED. Now probably the one thing I'm not perfectly happy about is this right here, okay? When we look at the wall there, if you look right in the middle, right in the dead center, I still ended up getting a little bit of a donut and that drives me nuts but I did everything that I possibly could in order to uh, try to focus that out to get rid of it. Uh, I, you know, I did all the adjustments on the reflector. I even shaved some off the bottom to try to get it closer to the LED. And some of that stuff helped, but I'm the only other thing I could think was to cut the whole bottom off the reflector. It wouldn't be tight around the LED. But I just, I don't think that's going to work. I don't think going deeper in there is going to work. But uh, fortunately, there is this. If we just, you know, turn it up high enough, the donut isn't really all that noticeable. So let's go try it out. Okay, first the original BLF GT. Now the Cree 3590 edition. It reaches the very tops of the tallest trees all the way in the back. I would estimate those trees to be roughly 60 feet tall.
Okay, now some of you probably remember this spot. This is where we had the original GT and there is the hotel and we're not really here to shoot that because I don't want to keep bothering people and plus I don't think that this new one is actually would shoot that distance I think it's too far but down below here there's a really awesome uh, wide open area uh, that I think is going to be ideal for this now besides of course the Super GT 3590 here I did bring also something to compare I brought uh, a mag light with my 5000 lumen LED upgrade in that for us to compare it to. Now for size reference here is a shot of my full size pickup truck. Notice also the trees in the far far background. Now the 5000 lumen mag light across the dam and the lake to those buildings. and the 3590 GT. Look down there at the back of that building, that dot right there, that's actually two cars parked side by side next to each other. That is a tremendous distance. And that massive wall of light still covers the whole building. Another insane thing about this light is how good of a mule it makes. For this shot, I turned on all the lights in my living room and in the kitchen, and then set up the camera and exposed what I thought was properly. It's crazy bright, and even with no reflector, it still has an effective range of like 80 yards. For more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Good lucks.